Hi there. Now is that not the most adventurous looking bit of kit you've seen on one table all day? That's all you need right there, isn't it really? Today I'm going to do a review on the Cold Steel Special Forces Shovel. Done a bit of testing on it. Had it for a couple of months now. It's been used. It's been, I wouldn't say abused, I don't abuse my tools. It's been used for the purposes that cold steel market it has been used for, which is digging, a bit of chopping. Haven't thrown it, but um, let's get into how much of a tool this actually is and what it's for and who's it's for, who is it for, and um, who might need to um, look for another shovel. Alright, here it is. It's the Cold Steel Special Forces Spetsnaz, I think they call it as well, shovel. I was drawn to this from a, a very interesting video that Cold Steel did, uh, part of their proof test videos, showing this being used in a way that you wouldn't generally see a garden variety true tempera cyclone shovel being used. Um, they begin with it cutting some rope, which I guess given this beveled and sharpened edge is something you would perhaps do with it if you had no other option. And then they move on to cutting some meat, big hanging bits of cow from a hook. And then they cut to the portly fellows that they are hacking up uh, ballistics gel dummies full of realistic human organs of course um, cracking one of these through a gentleman's neck um, they had me at that um, I thought well you know what I'm in the market for one of these a small shovel to take camping and that is probably the best sales pitch if not the most inventive that I've ever seen for a shovel so here we are some basic specs, you've got a hickory handle, I think. It doesn't look like hickory. It's probably just timber, I would say. But it's a wooden handle. And it is replaceable. You've got screws there. So you could fashion or order another one quite easily. Unscrew it, pull it out. There's a definite sort of, they've cut in, there's a bit of a lip where it meets and then the wood's about, you know, it's been lathed down. Um, so it will definitely slide out, I think, quite easily. Of course, it's not wiggly at all. It's um, just there so it can be changed, which is a good feature. Especially these mini shovels, which are often folding and very, um, very much sort of annual users because they get all rusted up. So it's good. The steel is a 1055 carbon steel, which is a, it's an axe steel, really. Um, your mid-ranged axes would be made of 1055. Um, it's a bit soft, but it holds a good edge. Uh, it's a carbon steel, so it will rust. And there's a fair bit to rust on there, actually. The painted part will obviously be fine, but that paint does start to come off. Um, but that, that edge there, you need to take care of that. So you need to oil this before you put it back in its sheath. Otherwise, you do get some small spots, which I've already got. But that's fine, because it's not. this isn't an expensive hunting knife. This is a $40, which is my next... Uh, point the price is a forty dollar shovel. So, um, yeah, I mean, you pay forty dollars for a full size shovel of a lesser brand. This is a um, cold steel brand, which I guess has a somewhat good reputation, I imagine. And um, yeah, just it's, there's not a great deal of other things around like this. Most other shovels this size, as I said, either screw together or fold up, and a fairly feeble. This just feels rock solid. It weighs 760 grams, which is about 28 ounces in the American style. The length from the top to the end is 21 inches, which in metric is 53 centimeters. Across the face, just over 6 inches, which in metric is 16 centimeters. So you're not going to be doing, you're not looking at something that's particularly um, uh, particularly huge for doing your large scale digging jobs. What I've used the shovel for is planting trees. It digs 
good sized holes when you're looking for something about a foot or a foot and a half, that's 46 centimeters in a metric. <laughs> um, something like that size is really good for getting on your knees and just hacking down like that. Getting back to that proof video, there is an excellent little bit of it with some guy who, I think it must be Dog the Bounty Hunter, digging the most extreme way possible. It's quite awesome. He really gets in there and he stabs the earth. He's like pulling the sword from the stone in reverse. He is well keen on digging. So, that's all good stuff I've said about it so far. Some of the negatives. It's got a very shallow face which is good for the chopping applications that Cold Steel market it as. If there was too much of a curve, and there is still a bit of a curve, which does make chopping less than ideal, but if there was any more of a curve, you'd almost have to tilt a bit to chop. With this, you can pretty much just weigh it down from dead 90 degrees and do a bit of chopping. I'll roll in some test footage here now, actually, of um, just me cutting through some fleshy uh, cactus type stuff and digging a hole and then doing a little bit of um, just hacking away at a bush I think did that earlier on so I'll put that in now A good slicer. Straight through the roots, thanks to that nice sharp edge. I feel like I could go to China. It's a good digger. So overall, back to the um, depth of the face, it doesn't make it the best digger for when you actually need to move the dirt out of the hole. It's, um, it's great for when you get your, get your hole going and then you can sort of just lever the stuff out. But when you actually have to move dirt from one pit to a pile, it just doesn't hold enough of it. It's, you'd have to have a real, real, you'd have to have some real good mud, or sort of semi-wet semi mud anyway, to just form a nice heap. Otherwise, it's, you're just going to get about this much stuff on there which is fine, but it's a really good ground breaker so when you are digging things like holes for trees because of this shape and the sharpness of course and this handy little step you've got here that is actually a reasonable step that you can put a boot on it does break ground really well
I've got a lot of good things to say about the cold steel Spetsnaz shovel. Um, it comes with a sheaf, or in my case it did. You generally pay about $10 extra from your vendors to have this sheaf come across. Um, it's got a bit of nylon, fairly large single bit of nylon there. And um, it's got this hanging thing here. Um, I guess this is for either of these things, could be attached by say carabiners to a, a bag or something like that. I've just put this bit of wire here so I can hang it from a nail on the wall in my shed. And then the shovel, sort of once you've, you kind of choose which way you're going to put the shovel in. It's a bit hard at first, but because I've started putting it in this way, the, the sheath's developed a bit of a bent that way. It slides down and these snaps come up, pop in there, like so. So who's this shovel for? Uh, this shovel is for campers, which is knocks your little trowel you bring to dig your crapping holes out of the park. It's just much, much better. You do that mundane task very quickly with this. I think the best, the best use for this, and I think anyone who is into any sort of off-roading should really have this as part of their, their kit. Stick it on the back of your, say, have your jerry cans mounted on the back of your, of your full drive or your camper trailer. Mount one of these next to those jerry cans. Um, you could probably strap it to the side quite easily. Uh, this is really good for, because um, you can get that proper leverage on it because it's not folding, you really can get the um, right under the tyres and because it's quite flat and low profile, you don't have to worry about having a, a different angle, you can sort of just use it, you, you stab it straight in like a spear and then you work it over. So for getting a car out, say just for self rescue in a vehicle, um, this should definitely go on part of your kit and also because it has this sharp edge around it, which you do have to maintain, um, which you may want to keep a file or something along if you go on a longer trip. Um, but because of that sharp edge, it goes straight through roots as well, which is a really good feature because um, roots will really muck you up and then you have to get things like axes or knives bloody down into the dirt. Whereas this, because it's got a soft edge, it's a kind of a disposable edge, I guess. You don't mind ruining it because you're just resharpening it with a rough stone or just, just a rock or something you probably could because it's fairly soft. Um, then you get a working edge on it again for your next batch of roots you're going to come across. The dirt will strip any edge, so I can see why they didn't bother getting a, a more high grade steel because dirt would strip S35 VN if you kept weighing it straight into the stuff with all the rocks and everything involved. So this could be the most essential, I think. Better than having saws and axes if you can only, it's if you're going ATVing or something as well. You only want to take one thing rather than bringing a folding saw and, a, and probably another shovel or a, you know, one of your old axes or something if you need to clear a path or you know, whatever you need to do, dig a hole or something. Take this first and I'm pretty sure it will serve all your purposes. It won't do any of the chopping amazingly well but it will certainly do it well enough for a shovel anyway. So that's the Cold Steel Special Forces slash Spetsnaz shovel. Highly recommended. Thank you for watching.